just clap your hands and would you open up your mouth? I don't know about you, but I want the Lord to be glorified. That's why I present to him my best. Come on, would you present to him your best worship this morning? Would you lift your voice in spite of yourself, in spite of what's going on, and begin to glorify him because he deserves it? It was not the alarm clock that woke us up this morning. It was by his goodness and his grace that we are here. Come on, somebody help me lift him up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We lift your name this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. You deserve our worship. Hallelujah. You deserve our praise. Hallelujah. You're still on the throne. Hallelujah. You're still God. You're working things out. And we glorify you today. In spite of what we face, Lord, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. Do I have some help this morning? And the honor. Hallelujah. So we lift our hands in worship and we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory. Come on, and the honor, and the honor, come on, worship him this morning. So we lift our hands in worship. Nobody should have to pump with primus this morning. You've been good to us and you deserve. When we look back over our lives and see all you've done, it's easy to lift our hands. Lord, help us to preach today. 
Give us your power, your wisdom. Let us think your thoughts and speak your words with accuracy. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Turn to the Gospel of Mark with me, please. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verse 48. Then he saw them straining at rowing, for the wind was against them. Now about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea and would have passed them by. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled. But immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then he went up into the boat to them, and the wind ceased, and they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marvel for they had not understood about the loaves because their heart was hardened. Go down to Mark chapter 8, verse 14. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. They did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. Then he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It's because we have no bread. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes do you not see, and having ears do you not hear? And do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the five thousand? How many baskets full of fragments did you take up? They said to him, Twelve. And he said, When I broke for the seven, for the four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up then? And they said, Seven. And he said to them, How do you not understand? I want to speak to you from the subject. Remember the fish and the loaves. Would you look toward your neighbor and say, remember the fish and the loaves. Be seated. All of these statements were spoken regarding the disciples of Jesus Christ, the first members of the Christian church. They had trust issues. They were charged by Jesus with being forgetful, thick, skulled, and hard-hearted. Jesus analyzed their plight and indicated that they misunderstood. They were afraid and they did not trust. And they felt they indicated that this was because they did not remember and did not understand two miracles that Jesus had performed by the power of God. Now the Gospels describe at least 37 miracles that were performed by Jesus. He performed many other miracles beyond that 37, but those specific miracles are not mentioned individually. But Mark 6 and 56 says, Wherever he entered into villages, cities, or the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that he might, that they might just touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him were made well. And so Jesus performed hundreds and possibly even thousands of miracles for the people, but 37 are specifically described. And of that 37 that are described in the Word of God, two of them are more than once set forth as specifically significant miracles. And not only because of their miraculous nature, 
but also because of the significant lessons that they taught and that could be learned from them. All the miracles taught lessons, but these two are specifically mentioned more than once as teaching miracles. Time and time again, Jesus said to the disciples, remember the fish, remember the loaves. Think about them, understand them. And it is further implied that if we remember the fish and the loaves, we won't be afraid, we won't be worried. We will know how to respond and how to think. And if Jesus was to carry on his work, if he was to do it through the disciples, he needed them to understand and he needed them to trust him. Every person is discontent when others do not trust him. Trusting and trustworthiness, trust ableness, they are essential to healthy, fulfilling relationships. If a person cannot trust you, if they can't believe you'll keep your commitment to them, they will not be confident in keeping their commitments unto you. And so several factors should be considered in extending trust or even distrust to another person. Trust or distrust should be guided by the proposed trustee's character, integrity, and genuineness. Ability and capacity should also be considered when you decide whether or not to trust an individual. If you trust someone or something to be or to do something that they cannot be and that they cannot do is inappropriate. But check their history, check their track record. The best indicator of what a person will do is what a person has already done. Would you give your neighbor that advice? And say, hey neighbor, the best indication of what a person will do is what they have already done. And then you should also consider their truthfulness and deceptiveness, their knowledge, their skill, their commitment, and the level of their love when you decide whether to trust them or not. If you're going to go all out for somebody, if you're going to take a bullet for somebody, you want to be able to trust them and you want them to trust you. And this is what Jesus was trying to develop with the disciples and that's what he's trying to develop with all of us who are here on today. The text verses indicate that much of what they and what we need to know can be learned from these two miracles where the multitude was miraculously fed and miraculously nourished. The first miracle is described in Mark 6, 35. It was late in the day. The disciples came to Jesus and said, it is a deserted place and the hour is late. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy bread for themselves for they have nothing to eat. Is it not amazing that Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And here come his disciples telling Jesus, send them away. Send them away that they may go and get food for themselves. And Jesus, in the later passage, said, they need not depart. Need not depart. You give them something to eat. That's verse 37. And they said, well, what do you want us to do? Go and spend some money and buy some bread for them to eat. But then Jesus said, how many loaves do you have? He said, we've got five loaves, not really five loaves, but five rolls and two fish. And he said, have the multitude sit down. When the multitude had sat, Jesus took those five rolls and the two fish. And he looked up toward heaven and blessed the bread and blessed the fish and then divided it among them all. Gave it to the disciples. The disciples passed it on to the multitude. And the Bible says they were all filled. And they took up 12 baskets of fish and bread after it was all over. 
and there were 5,000 men in the crowd, not counting the women, not counting the children. In the second miraculous feeding of the multitude, we look in Acts 8 and chapter 1. Again, the crowd was great. The people were hungry. And Jesus said in verse 2, I have compassion on the multitude. They've been with me now three days, and they've had nothing to eat. Listen, they must have been motivated to stay three days without food because the words of Jesus were so wonderful and so rich. Listen, tell your neighbor, Jesus is worth it. Whatever you've got to miss and do without just to be with Jesus, he is worth it. He said, I have compassion on them. I will not send them away fasting. Or he said in this version, if I send them away hungry, they will faint on the way because many of them have come from afar. The disciples said, well, how can you feed them here in the wilderness? Verse 5, he said, how many rolls do you have? And they said, seven. And he commanded the multitude again to sit on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and again gave thanks to God. And then he blessed them and began to break them and gave them to the disciples and the disciples to the people. And verse 8 says they all ate and were filled and they took up seven large baskets of leftover fragments. And the Bible says that there were about 4,000 people in the crowd. Now both of these miracles were practical illustrations of what Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount is in Matthew 6 and 25 where Jesus said, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink. Don't worry about your body, what you'll put on. Life is more than food and the body is more than clothing. Jesus said, don't worry. Tell your neighbor, Jesus said, don't worry. Don't worry. When you worry, you are disobeying Jesus. You're not trusting Jesus. Jesus said, don't worry. Is, it, is anybody in here worried about anything? Anything troubling you emotionally, mentally? Jesus gives you this word and says, listen, as long as I'm involved and around, you don't have anything to worry about. Tell two people you don't have anything to worry about. Said, said in verse 26, the birds of the air, they don't sow or reap, but God feeds them. They don't worry. He said, which of you by adding a worrying can add one inch to your height? Don't worry about clothing. Verse 28, the lilies of the field, Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like a lily. Verse 30, if God so clothes the grass of the field, don't you know he will take care of you, O oh, you of little faith? said, don't worry about what you'll eat, where you, what you'll drink, or what you'll wear. The Gentiles seek after this thing, but your heavenly Father knows what you need. Look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God knows what you need. You've been worrying. You're in a, in a fit of worry and anxiety. You're troubling people and worrying with folk. But listen, God knows what you need. Tell him, I'm glad that God knows what I need. Verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. If you get busy for God, working for God, serving God, God's going to give you what you need that you might continue to work for him and serve him. Don't worry about it. Give God glory and God will provide. Is there anybody here that knows that God will provide? The Lord will make a way somehow. And then in Philippians 4 and 4, he said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Will you clap your hands and praise God? 
that the Lord instructs you, don't worry about anything. Battle against worry. Don't let your mind focus on worry. Trust in the Lord. Rely upon God. God will bring you through and God will bring you out all right. So what I hear the Lord saying, and y'all pray for me today. What I hear the Lord saying is that he wants us to, without reservation or fear, to trust him enough to totally commit to his work and to his will. He wants us to know that he will do what is best, that he will provide everything that we need or even desire. He's saying to us, stop being afraid. Stop worrying about your survival. Your job is to obey me and trust me, and my job is to take care of you. Be not dismayed. Whatever time, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. If you know that I'm right, and if you know that he's done it for you in the past, give God some praise. God is all powerful. God knows everything and God loves you. His power is great enough to do anything that you need. His knowledge is enough not only to know what you need but also to know how to give you what you need and his love is great enough to love you so much that he will do anything for you and when you doubt God, you doubt his love, you doubt his wisdom, you doubt his power and my God can do anything and he loves me enough to do anything for me so I'm going to trust him. Is there anybody who will say to your neighbor, I'm going to trust him. But the disciples had trouble catching it. They did not know how to chill. Ask your neighbor, you know how to chill. They didn't get it. They missed the last lesson, and so they didn't understand the next lesson. And the next chance they got a chance to doubt, they would doubt. The next time they had a chance to worry, they would worry. Worry about what they were going to eat. Worry about what they're going to wear. And Jesus had to grab them by the collar and shake them and tell them, don't just plod along, meditate on the thing you are experiencing. Listen to what I'm saying. Pay attention to what I do and why I do it. Know that if I did it before, I can do it again. If I can perform one miracle, I can perform another miracle. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if God has blessed you before, God can bless you again. Come on, tell somebody God can bless you again. I'm almost through now. These two miracles actually took place. They're not fables. They're not fairy tales. Jesus, the Son of God, performed a creative miracle. He brought into existence enough food to feed 5,000 folk. And again, he brought into existence enough food to feed 4,000 folk. The food was not shipped in from some distant location. He had everybody to sit down so that everybody could see and nobody could claim that things are so turbulent, so much confusion, so much going on that Jesus could have brought the food in from somewhere else and they would never have known it. But no, all of them were watching and looking and they saw Jesus break the bread and bless the bread and multiply twice and thousands of times enough for everybody to eat and to have food. These reports came from eyewitnesses. And so I want to try to understand why Jesus wanted us to remember and what Jesus wanted us to remember about the fish and the loaves. And number one, in terms of the fish and the loaves, he wanted us to remember that they know or should know that God can work with inadequate resources. Number one, he wanted them to know that God can work with inadequate resources. Turn to your name and say, God can work with inadequate resources. God came out of nowhere because there was nowhere for him to come from. He stepped out on nothing. 
because there was nothing for him to stand on. And he spoke and said, let there be. And the sun started shining and the moon started glowing and the stars started twinkling and the fish started swimming and the birds started flying all because God stepped out on nothing and said, let there be. And listen, if God could do that, imagine what God can do with the nothingness of your life. If you're down to nothing, you're just right for God. Tell your neighbor, if you're down to nothing, you're just right for God. God steps in when there is nothing and he works a miracle on our behalf. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1 and 27, but God had chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God had chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh should glory out uh, uh, in his presence. And so listen, if you are worried, if you are beset by fear, then you're not really trusting God because God can take nothing and make something out of it. God can take the things that are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. And so they should have known that God works with inadequate resources. Come on, tell your neighbor, neighbor, God works with inadequate resources. The second thing that they should have known is that they should have known that God loves his children and God will meet their needs. Tell your neighbor, God loves his children and God will meet their needs. Jesus said, I have compassion on the multitude and I will not send them away fasting. You need to know that God loves you so much that God will make a way just for you. Oh yes, he will. They should have known the third thing, that God is more than enough. Tell your neighbor, God is more than enough. God will provide for you. When they got through, they fed 5,000 and they had 12 baskets left over, one for each of the disciples. And the second time, they fed 4,000 and they had seven baskets left over. God has enough and to spare and God never runs out. Will you tell somebody, my God, never runs out. He's always has more than enough. Seven baskets full, 12 baskets full. In Ephesians 3 and 20, the Bible says, now unto him that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, all that we ask, I think, according to the power that is at work in us, exceeding abundantly not only what we need but what we desire not only enough to get by but more than enough tell your neighbor my God is the God of more than enough they should have known that God can interrupt the natural order anytime he gets ready we look at things and try to ascertain what we can do but God says don't look at the situation just trust me I can interrupt the natural order I can heal you when the doctor shakes his head I can protect you when your enemy comes against you they might try to drag you down but put your trust in God God will God will take care of you God is supernatural. God works miracles. The same God who created the universe, the same God that raised up Jesus from the dead,
can heal your body, can set you free, can take you higher than you've ever gone before. He can meet your needs. He can bring you out. Has he ever brought anybody out, out of trouble, out of distress? If you know that God can show up and interrupt the natural order, then let's praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. And he said, whatever you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. God can bring a miracle out of nothing. He can step into the nothingness of your situation and pick you up and turn you around and take you higher than you've ever been before. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They should have known. I said they should have known that God will always give back more than you give him. I said they should have known that God always gives more than you give him. They gave him five rolls and two fish. He gave them 12 baskets full. Back when they got through, they gave him seven rolls and a few fish. He gave them seven baskets filled. When they were all through, God will always bless you more than you have, more than you can give, more than you can share. They should have known. Come on, tell your neighbor, they should have known that Jesus was their source. I said Jesus was their source. Every time he gave them fish and he gave them rolls, they would go out and distribute to the multitude. But then they had to go back to Jesus and get some more. Child of God, you're walking around with an empty basket. Don't walk around with your basket empty. Go back to Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm trusting in you. Jesus, I need a miracle. Jesus, I need your help. Jesus, my basket is empty. Fill me again. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your power. Some of you are struggling to make it in yourself. But I would suggest that you ought to put your trust in the Lord. Call on him. He will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Does anybody here know that the Lord will provide for you? God is your source. Tell three people, God is my source. Come on and praise him. Praise him. Gotta keep on going back. Go back in prayer. Go back in faith. Go back in confidence. Go back in trust and say, Lord, I can't make it without you. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. They should have known. They should have known that the miracles of the past are not isolated events. If God worked a miracle in the past, God can work a miracle right now. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, if God did it before, he can do it again. If God starts you off, God will finish. He said in Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing, that he who hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of the Lord Jesus. Neighbor, if God has ever blessed you, he'll bless you again. If God has started anything in your life, God is not through with you yet. He that hath begun a good work will perform it until the day of the Lord Jesus. Walk in his power, walk in his might, walk in faith. 
Trust in the Lord. It ain't over yet. God is not through blessing you. He wants to take you higher, higher, higher. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. You're not defeated. You're not through. Look at your name and say, I'm just getting started in God. I'm just getting started by the power of my Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm going up higher. I don't know about you, but God has many more blessings in store. I'm going to trust him. He is the God that can multiply my resources. He is the God that raised up Jesus from the dead. And if he raised up Jesus, there is nothing that God cannot do. Tell three people, there is nothing that God can't do. Hallelujah. 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 Do you have any rivers that you think are uncrossable? Do you have any mountains that you can't tunnel through? God specializes in the impossible and he's able to do what no other power is able to do. God does the impossible. Stand up and praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are miracles. I said there are miracles in the room right now. Lift up your hand. Do you need a miracle? Is that something you want God to do in your life? Some of you have already been healed, even as the word of God went forth. Some of you already have your miracle, your blessing. What you need from God, God touch now. Deliver and set free. Some are afflicted and troubled, but God, you're able to heal. You're able to deliver in the name of Jesus. Brother Ricky Brown, where is your brother? Is your brother here? Hey, brother, where are you? Uh, would you come down here? Come down here with me. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and praise God for this, brother. How many days ago did you have surgery? It was June the 5th. June 5th. You had an 11 hour surgery. Pancreatic cancer. But you're here. The doctors removed the tumor off your pancreas. And you are blessed by the power and might of Almighty God. And stand it up and praise in God. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Come on, give praise to God. You can sit down here. You don't have to go all the way up there. Come on, clap your hands and praise God, everybody. If God did it for him, God can do it for you. If you need a miracle, God can perform a miracle that you need in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and praise him. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give God advance praise. If you trust him and if you know he's able and that he'll respond to your word, 
then you don't wait until you get the miracle to praise him. You praise him even before the miracle is done. And if you praise him, God will do it. When I count to three, give God advanced praise. One, two, three, praise him. Oh, yeah. Oh, bless his name. Touch three people, tell them, be healed, be healed, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be delivered in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Check your body out. Check you, your body out. If, if there was a pain, see is the pain still there? See is the pain still there? If your back was stiff and you couldn't move, see can you move now? In the name of Jesus. If there was a lump, if there was an affliction, if there was a uh, pain in your body, see is it there? If it's gone, if it's gone, would you step out into the aisle? Just step out, get in the aisle, get in the aisle, the pain is gone. The pain is gone, the condition is gone, the lump is gone. Get in the aisle, get in the aisle and praise him. Step out, step out, believe God for your miracle. Believe God, there he is, there she is. Step out, step out. If it's gone, have thanks enough, praise enough. Step into the aisle, there she is. Hallelujah, there he is, there he is. Hallelujah. Tell three people God is able and give praise to God. Give praise to God. There she is. There she is. Hallelujah. Now everybody praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the miracle, for the bodies you've blessed, people you've healed, the great things you've done. We'll just remember the fish and the loaves. Whenever we get in a tough spot, you'll say God deals with tough spots. And God's going to bring me out. Oh, tell two people, God's going to bring me out in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and praise him. Everybody who would be saved. Everybody who wants your sins forgiven. Who wants Jesus to be your Savior and your Lord. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Without Jesus, life is not worth living. But if you accept him, Christ in you is the hope of glory. And you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. If you're here today and you say, Preacher, I'm not saved. I want to know Jesus and accept him as my Lord and Savior. I'll pray for you right where you stand, right where you are. Your sins can be forgiven. This Jesus that we've been preaching about will become your Lord. The one who can do such miracles wants to be involved in your life to do miracles for you. In the name of Jesus, at this point in time, if you hear the word that I've spoken and you want to be saved while every eye is closed, every head is bowed, if that's you, lift up your hand, hold it high. Preacher, I want to accept Jesus as my Savior and my Lord. I see that hand. Lift up that hand, please, all over the room. If you want to know Jesus, he'll come into your heart today. Lift up that hand and do so quickly in the name of the Lord. Lift up that hand quickly, quickly. I'm about to pray. Dear Lord, I pray for every uplifted hand, for every individual in this room who said, I want to be saved. I want Jesus to be my Lord. Your word says that we will confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him 
from the dead. We shall be saved. And they shall be saved today in the name of Jesus. Say this prayer after me, please, dear Lord. I'm sorry for all my sins. Please forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I have been. I want to be saved. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for me and rose from the dead. I accept Jesus as my Savior and my Lord. And I thank you, Lord. I am saved. I am forgiven. I have new life. Clap your hands and thank God for your salvation. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. Give him praise. Give him praise.